Hey guys, Alexander Williamson here with the secret fish the secret fish tank inside your history, the secret history inside of your fish tank. And today we're going to be talking about total dissolved solids. Uh, we're going to do some experiments to show you the difference in total dissolved solids and talking a little bit about why they matter and if they matter to you. They might not. Um, if you're just talking uh, your average pet store fish and you're using tap water and the rest of your parameters are in check, uh, it may not matter. But if you're talking uh, caridina shrimp, even neocaridina shrimp, uh, it matters somewhat. Definitely with caridina shrimp, they can get uh, very dead if your TDS is either too low or too high. They can't make their exoskeletons. And same with your snails. They need a certain amount of that. So... I just want to run a couple tests. We've got our handy dandy uh, $12, and it's accurate. I've calibrated it with other things that I know for a fact what the TDS is. Uh, our handy dandy checker, but it was 10 or 12, something like that, on, on Amazon. Some brand I've never heard of, Ubonte. Um, let's see, where's it made? Does it even say? I was just curious what that name. Sounds African, right? In any case, it's good, good, good TDS checker, nice and, and cheap. So first we're going to go with purified water. And purified water, look at that, one. That means there is nothing in that water. And that's not good for your fish. That's not good for you, really. Uh, too much of it, that is. Because your body, when you have water, any animal tries to... Uh, reach an equilibrium and your body has a certain amount of salts in it anyhow and this should be marketed as distilled water rather than purified water technically i mean it is purified but it's definitely been purified through distillation would be my guess so then we're going to do we're going to pour that out and now we're going to get water coming straight out of the tap now i live in seattle and Seattle is known for its incredibly soft water. So some places in the country will have water readings uh, out of the tap at anywhere from 100 to 300. And 300 to 500 is considered the, the safe cutoff for humans. That means uh, TDS, let me explain real quick, is the amount of stuff dissolved in your water that is non-organic. So... Uh, you know, potassium, elements, uh, salt, any sort of elements, any that includes metals, lead, copper, anything that's floating around in your water and it has been uh, put into your water will be picked up. So when we test straight out of the tap, today we're getting a reading of 26. That means there's nothing in this water. That means there's the chlorine that they are legally obligated to put in the water, and that is it. It's almost as if we are living on well water, which, I mean, there's worse things. But uh, when your body has a TDS in its water in its cells of, say, I don't know, 60 or 70, because it has a certain amount of salt, that's why your sweat is salty, um, that's why your tears are salty, uh, you need that, and when too much water outside your system doesn't have that, your body will then leach that, uh, not necessarily your body actively, but just the rules of hydrodynamics, water tries to find an equilibrium. Warm water and cool water try to equal each other out or separate into layers, and same with TDS, your body will uh, try to do that as well. So now what we're going to do is we're going to let the hot water tank heat up, and I want to show you the difference. I live in a house that's about 50 years old, and the hot water heater often has debris and sediment in it. Uh, and it's been run a while today, so it might not make a huge difference, but in certain houses, it can definitely put like a lot of iron into your water, things like that. So while we're doing that, we're going to take some of these other uh, elements, we'll say. So this is definitely sodium bicarbonate. Um, let's see here. I want to show you guys the ingredients just so you can know. If so it is a hundred percent sodium bicarbonate. So this is found naturally and it will be found on in places like uh, certain types of rock, limestone, things like that. And animals uh, rely on it a certain degree for some of it in their system. And it depends on the animal on how much they need. Hold on one moment, let me grab a little more salt because I want to make sure that there is some salt in here. 
So, not lots of salt in there. Uh, now we will be seeing if this water, water's still heating up. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take a spoon and swirl around the salt. We'll wash that off in, in the in the river. Might as well be uh, it's clear water in the tap. And then we are going to mix the baking soda also, or sodium bicarbonate, whereas this is sodium chloride or table salt. So let's fill that same glass up with hot water. Hold on one moment. With hot water. And interesting thing about our hot water is it comes out not so clear. So you can barely read the label through that. Which, let's take a look at the TDS and see if that's because of aeration or if that is because of some sort of what the TDS is. And look at that right off the bat, the TDS has jumped to 52. Sometimes I've seen it as high as 80 when I just turn on my hot water heater. So that is something going on in the pipes. And I just wanted to share that with you guys because usually you're not putting cold water into your fish tank, right? You're putting uh, water that is the temperature of your fish tank water. And that water was probably about 85 degrees or so. Um, and I just wanted to show you that just any sort of heat because of the hot water heater then kicks over to a different set of pipe piping and will give you different results. So we're going to use the baking soda and test that and we're going to use the salt and test that. So the table salt, this occurs in nature also, obviously. It's so let's take a look at what it comes up. Whoa, look at that. It broke the machine. It went up to 700 or something, and then it it decided to turn off. So let's see here. 686, and then it dies. Then it dies. I'm going to wash that off just because the contacts, I don't want them to. And the way it measures it is kind of interesting. So it's through these two electrode contacts, and they basically just run a little current through, and it measures the resistance of the current. Uh, the resistance of the current. So we'll mix this up. Sodium bicarbonate is also a way that people control pH levels in their tank. So boom, that's going to give us also an error reading. Looks like it's jumping to about 300 right from the bat. Let's close that off. Okay, so now we want to look at what happens when you dilute it right away. So we'll say we'll take mostly lukewarm water and we're gonna pour off say I don't know a little bit into it and now we're gonna stir it up mix it up and this is just to show you how it diffuses because sometimes it's not rational a lot of times water stratifies and the heavier the things in the water including total dissolved solids go towards the bottom because they're not always read as completely dissolved and so you're only going to know below the surface what the TDS is is in your central water column because the very top also has surface tension and can withstand withhold uh, heavier things in it because of the surface tension of plant debris and algae and things like that on the water and also it can do that with the bottom because the weight of the water it is all settled and heavier elements will settle even when they're dissolved so now we're getting a reading of let's see what do we get here clear it we're getting a reading of 13 6,000 5,000 where are we gonna go did we break the machine did we break the machine? 8,000. So just ridiculous. Like, so be careful when you're working with baking soda, be careful. So I just want to show you that the machine is not like ruined or anything. Uh, we'll fill up a little more tap water here. And I just want to show you that it's all good. Before we go over to the fish tanks and I'll show you what a appropriate reading is, we have to be really careful because even a squirt of Windex, for instance, can throw off things quite a bit. So now in this, we're getting a reading of around 46, it looks like, 47. Uh, and it, let's see here. So 46. So let's just show what happens when we put a trace amount of that water in. So that's just a little splash of that water that has baking soda in it. 
And what does it do to the total dissolved solids in this thing? Let's hit clear, sorry. Boom, 246, 2,774. Uh, so we're getting immense dissolved solids. So be very careful. And when we talk about rocks leaching uh, things into your water, it only takes a little bit, as you can see. It only takes a very small amount to make a huge difference on what your TDS is. Now granted, this is salt and things that are easily dissolvable, whereas metals are less dissolvable, and your TDS reader is not gonna tell you what it has dissolved into your water. Now, I know you guys say you get dizzy when I move, and I'm not using a tripod, I'm freewheeling here. So I'm gonna cover up the screen as I do, and we're gonna go over to some of the other tanks and get some readings just so I can show you. So in this tank, we've got crushed coral and the crushed coral has calcium bicarbonate in it it has some salts in it it has all sorts of minerals a little bit of potassium as does the water in general because of these rocks which are red which means oftentimes that they're leaching iodine or iron or gold some metal um, and so in this tank we should expect to see higher than the tap water that it started out as but not insane so we're going to clear it we're going to check what it is, and we're getting a reading of 258. And that is exactly where we want to be for, uh, you know, that's a little bit harder for some animals. And that's, I had to work to get the water that hard without putting something like baking soda that can hurt the fish in. Um, a little bit of baking soda is okay. Look that up. Don't just go dumping baking soda in, please, because of me. But... It does have an impact, and uh, the plants have an impact, the algae has an impact. Certain plants actually can gather heavy metals, and then when you take them out, when you trim them, you remove the heavy metals. So in places like Flint, Michigan, <laughs> you can use uh, algae or plants or fungi and remove that when you're done, and then it will help change those uh, parameters. So we're walking and we're walking, we're walking over to the big Venezuelan tank. This is my biggest tank at the moment, which is 40 gallons bow front. And we are going to hit clear on the, the Dilio. And what are we seeing here? 155. So that's some pretty soft water. Um, it's, it's fairly soft. I've got cherry shrimp in there, uh, Sakura and painted fire shrimp in there, um, as well as uh, Venezuelan fish. They like soft water. They like um, pH around 7 or so, 7.5. Uh, so that's all good. So now we're going to go to the new setup the new and exciting setup that will hopefully be housing rainbow fish soon. In fact, I know it will. The order is on its way. And it has a reading of only 63. And so the fish would actually not want to live in this water right now. So I can check all the parameters and they may be fine and the fish will survive for a little while, but it will actually dehydrate them. So they need to get their salts and minerals, but the best way to get that is through natural processes of cycling your tank and adding different kinds of stone and letting that happen slowly over time so you can catch those big swings before they go insane. Now, lastly, we're gonna test this shrimp tank, which has my cherry coals. It also has some uh, tiger endlers in here. And this is in flux. We're going to be doing a new setup here later today. But I just want to show you that is not accurate. Let's clear. So clear back to green. Uh, so we're testing this water. And we're getting a reading of 193 or so. And the way you test your water, I wanted to show you this too. So your test, we test, say we test uh, right at the very top. Wait to, so we're getting a one, 189. Wait, let's see here. 125, 191, 191-ish at the top of the water column. And when we put the thing a little lower, we get 219, 330, 334. Interesting. So farther down in the water column, you're going to get a different reading of your TDS. So that's important to know. Also, aeration has a, an effect because there's less water to measure. So when I put it straight into the stream of these bubbles, the TDS is coming up as like 57 or 58. So that's also not accurate. So 
I highly recommend that when measuring TDS, you guys measure it in the back corner of the tank and a little bit down into the tank. That's probably the best way to do it. And uh, I hope you learned a little bit of something today. Uh, we haven't gone into the like really hardcore specifics of all that. Um, we've got a brave soul guppy. They're tough little critters uh, in the tank right now, just kind of as the canary in the coal mine. Uh, sorry, little guy, that you have to be the first to find out if, if it's okay. Um, but in any case, if you learned something, please click like. If you stuck with me this long, that means that uh, I guess I entertained you for 15 minutes or whatever. And uh, I would really appreciate it if you click like, subscribe, share the link, uh, show your friends. Uh, we're going to be doing more tests and things like this. You know, to be honest, I didn't know what the numbers would be when we did all this. I'm learning with you guys, so I'm here to try stuff out, try new things, figure out how to do the best things and things like that when when you're breeding fish or growing shrimp or certain plants that are very touchy all of this makes a huge difference so i just wanted to uh pick one thing today and it happened to be total dissolved solids and every video will will pick something else or we'll talk about the history of something and uh, we'll have some fun together if you want that to keep going and you want me to be able to afford uh little funky uh, TDS meters and reagents for testing for copper and other minerals and uh, metals in the tank so that we can find out together what affects what, how to get those levels up or down and which species like those and profiles on those species. The biggest thing you can do to help the channel then is uh, go to the Patreon page because right now uh, I am not monetized. I hope you're not seeing a ton of ads because I'm not getting any money for ads and I have wanted it to be that way to have the lowest amount of ad load possible for you guys. So uh, please like, please uh, subscribe, and if you're feeling like you want to support this channel in the long run and you can spare it, check out my Patreon link in the description below. Thank you so much for staying tuned, and I'll talk to you next, next time. Uh, take care of yourself. Take care of your fish. Let's all take care of each other, and keep on swimming, guys. All right, I'll talk to you later.